Good morning, members and friends of St. Stephen's Church. Welcome to morning prayer on this Wednesday in the third week of Easter. I always think Easter is a pretty good deal, right? Lent lasts for 40 days, but Easter lasts for 50 days. As my friend Lori likes to say, 50 days of fabulous. We'll be moving through morning prayer in our Book of Common Prayer today, which begins on page 80. So if you have your prayer book, you're welcome to turn there to page 80. And if you don't have a Book of Common Prayer, just listen along and pray with us, and the words will carry you where you need to go. Um, Feel free to make a comment this morning just to say hello to people who may be joining us live and let folks know that you're on and praying together with them. So with that, let's make our way to page 80 in the Book of Common Prayer at the Invitatory. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our Easter hymn, Pascha Nostrum, is at page 83. Christ our Passover, page 83. And let's say that together. Alleluia! Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia! Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. The psalm appointed for this morning is 38. You can find it at page 636 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 636. You're welcome to read along if you like, saying together, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath. For your arrows have already pierced me and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no soundness in my body because of my sin. For my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. My wounds stink and fester by reason of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and prostrate. I go about in mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am utterly numb and crushed. I wail because of the groaning of my heart. O Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding. My strength has failed me. And the brightness of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and companions draw back from my affliction. My neighbors stand afar off. Those who seek after my life lay snares for me. Those who strive to hurt me speak of my ruin and plot treachery all the day long. But I am like the deaf who do not hear, like those who are mute and do not open their mouth. I have become like one who does not hear and from whose mouth comes no defense. For in you, O Lord, have I fixed my hope. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, do not let them rejoice at my expense, those who gloat over me when my foot slips. Truly, I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is always with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those who are my enemies without cause are mighty, and many in number are those who wrongfully hate me. Those who repay evil for good slander me because I follow the course that is right. O Lord, do not forsake me. 
be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading this morning comes from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. I'm at the first chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. He, that is Jesus the Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, All things were created through Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything He might be preeminent. For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. And you who once were estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death in order to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel which you heard, which has been preached to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, there's one to put in your pocket, right? I mean, sometimes I think about it, people come up and say, well, who is Jesus? And it's not always particularly easy to answer that right off the top of your head. And yet, I think you can just go right here to Paul's letter to the Colossians, and you find one of the most beautiful descriptions of just who Jesus is, the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, all things created through him, the one who brings us peace, the one who holds us together, the one who is the head of the church, the one who reconciles us in his own life and death and resurrection in order that we can stand before God also. This is the nature of God in Christ. And this is a definition, I think, not only that is helpful, but think about it. The words are also so beautiful, and yet the depth of sentiment is even more beautiful. Whoever took the time to write this, Paul or some of Paul's followers, whoever takes the time to read it, these words are just uplifting, and they're beautiful, and they come with a promise, and they come also with an invitation to stay steadfast in the faith, to continue to walk in the way that Jesus has called us to walk, continue to be faithful to God in order that we might be reconciled not solely with God, but also with one another. So the next time you're wondering, really, who is Jesus for me and for the world? Go back to that first chapter of Colossians and give it a look. It'll certainly guide you. Let's go to Canticle number 20, Gloria and Excelsis. Canticle 20 at page 94 in your prayer book. At page 94, and saying together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's join in affirming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed at page 96. Page 96. And saying together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers are at page 97. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B are at page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The collect in this third week in Easter can be found at page 224 in your prayer book if you'd like to join along. Page 224, the collect for the third Sunday in Easter we use throughout the week. Let us pray together saying, O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to, us, known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, Open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm at the Collect for Guidance on page 100. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The top of page 101. Welcome to join in the prayer saying, Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. I do invite you now into a time of prayer and intercession I want to particularly ask your prayers this day for our bishop, for Brian Pryor as he prepares to complete his service with us in the Episcopal Church in Minnesota. And I ask your prayers for our bishop-elect, Craig Loya, while he too tries to make good decisions and transition as he comes to serve with us in ECMN. So for Brian and for Craig. I ask your prayers for healing for Ken Lehman, support for his wife, Mary Margaret. 
I ask your prayers for healing for Bill Kleins and for his son David who's caring for him. We pray for comfort for Anne Wright and for the Vorbrick family. We share in thanksgiving and offer God's blessings for Susan Akins, who celebrated her birthday on April 25th. For Erin Sexauer, granddaughter of Rick and Lynn Torney, on her graduation from high school. And also we pray in thanksgiving for the birth of William, the Torney's new great-nephew. We join with Allie and Andrew Smolka in giving thanks for the birth of their niece, Harriet Lane Krug, on the 23rd, and also praying for the birthday of Harriet's mother, Angela, to come on April 30th. We celebrate with Allie and Andrew their second wedding anniversary on the 28th of April. And also we give thanks for the 32nd wedding anniversary of Andrew's parents, Roman and Janet Smolka. And also we pray with Allie and Andrew in mourning for the death of Arlene, baby Harriet's grandmother, who died just a few hours after Harriet's birth. Also pray in thanksgiving for the birthday coming next week of Nicole Bates. I continue to ask your prayers for those in this world who are suffering in this time of COVID, particularly the sick, those caring for them, our hospital workers, our first responders, caregivers in nursing homes and other places where many of your family members may be. We pray that God's presence and strength be with them to, to keep them whole, give them strength to care for one another. Are there other prayers that you would offer this morning? Please just go ahead and do so wherever you are. Let's join together in the general thanksgiving at page 101. 101. And praying together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Then let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Thank you for taking part in morning prayer this morning. I want to thank you also to those who have so kindly and consistently sent messages of support and strength to the ministry staff of St. Stephen's Church. We truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you also to those of you who have taken time to be kind and generous in making your financial gifts to the church and helping us keep these ministries underway. We'll return this evening to Facebook Live. Um, at 8 o'clock for a service of Compline. But prior to that, you're welcome to a check-in via Zoom, live at 5, 5 o'clock. So just check your email from the church, and it'll give you all the um, information about connecting again later on today. Thank you. God bless you with a good day.